Joining me today is Dr. Carl Ladd, who is the Executive Director of the New Hampshire School Administrators Association. Um, and, you know, I, I want to keep talking about funding and sort of the economics of schools. Um, and on the practical matter, as we look forward, um, you've made the case that the costs that are there don't go away. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to pick them up. Mm -hmm. um, and either it gets, either the state will pick it up or cities and towns will pick it up through their property taxes. And the property tax is tied to value, mm -hmm. not to income. Mm -hmm. um, it is in the grand bargain um, a state seeking some different sort of tax mechanism? I think at some point we're going to have to take a look at not just the expenditure side of the ledger, I think we need to look at the revenue side. Um, and that's always an unpopular, um, to put it mildly, topic of conversation in Concord. But I think that the reality is school districts have done an incredible job of holding the line on costs. I think uh, if you talk to most school districts, they are cutting budgets. If they're losing funding from the state, um, they're cutting teachers, uh, they're cutting programs, they're trying to keep things as stable as possible. However, there are costs that are completely out of their control. The New Hampshire retirement system costs being one, health insurance costs being another. What, what comes in from the state? What comes in from the federal government? The, the, um, the mandates continue to grow. So the responsibilities of school districts to meet the needs of kids continues to grow and expand as other institutions fall by the wayside. And there has to be some discussion about how do we provide the funding for these schools to continue to meet the needs of kids. And that has to be a revenue discussion as well as an expenditure discussion. Can schools become dramatically more efficient? I'm not exactly sure how most schools can become more efficient when there are so many federal and state mandates and regulations under which they have to operate. I think schools do a great job of turning lemons into lemonade on a daily basis. They take whatever it is they're given for a budget and they, they do their very best to make it work. I think we've got some outstanding uh, managers and administrators within our state that really hold the line, really look for cost savings, make the organization as efficient as possible. I mean, you know, when we're talking about educating children, it's, it's a human endeavor. It's not making widgets. It's not uh, a factory model. It's really a personal model. And that requires human capital, and that requires a greater expenditure in order to meet those needs. And I, and I think that there is, um, I think there is uh, some cost effectiveness that we could have through perhaps some consolidation discussions, uh, through greater regionalization, uh, but in our state, that becomes very problematic because it, we are such a local control state. When we've gone we're, the we're splitting, direction, we're we? splitting apart. You know, you see Vermont, which I think has done a really great job of looking systematically um, and very thoroughly. They didn't just jump into it like Maine did, and there was a huge backlash against Maine. But I think Vermont's done a really great job of looking at that, and I think New Hampshire needs to do that. However, every time that discussion get started, it's all about local control. Right now we're fighting uh, against uh, an effort to uh, make it very easy for cooperative school districts to just fly apart, which when you talk about local control, that, that's great. However, you are creating great inefficiencies and when it comes to containing costs. You have to have a superintendent for every new school. You have to have an administrative staff for every new school. You have to have business services. You have to be able to make payroll. You have to be able to do all of those things. And on one hand, people, when they're going through that withdrawal process, they'll be the first ones. I was on a school board for eight years, so I know exactly what this is because I was part of an effort at one time to break up my SAU. So I know, I know of which I speak. Okay. And people will stand up and say, this is all about local control. I don't care if it costs a little bit more. Well, in two or three years when they find out that it does indeed cost a little bit more, people get very angry and then they say, well, we need to cut costs. Well, you had an organization that worked effectively and you blew it up. So the way to cut costs is to get back together. And we have, and we have buyer's remorse 
in so, many districts around the around the state. Well, we'll look at that, but and we'll, uh, I'm out of time right now. But when we return, we're going to continue our conversation and focus on some other issues, including school choice. So please stay with us. <laughs>